go 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in just 4.1 seconds. The epicenter for this need for speed is a 50 kilometer region surrounding Modena, Italy, otherwise known as La Terra di Motori, or Motor Valley. Modena is home to Ferrari, Lamborghini, Pagani, Maserati, now Alfa Romeo. Over 200 craftspeople with at least five years of experience work inside these walls. Yet they produce just 3,500 Alphas per year. The story starts on the 24th of June, 1910, when a group of entrepreneurs buy a defunct Italian car company. They immediately rechristen it the Anomina Lombarda Fabrica Automobili, or Alpha for short. It was in this Milan area, which today is most famous potentially for the fashion industry. Two years later, in 1912, the brand goes racing. Alpha was a kind of a born winner. And its race cars have been always driven by heroes. The outbreak of World War I changes everything. Alpha falls under the control of Nicola Romeo. From this point forward, every machine will now be called an Alfa Romeo. Yet when the war ends, it's a 22-year-old racer that pushes the brand forward. Alfa Romeo was uh, the winner of the first and second uh, Formula One uh, championship with uh, Nino Farina and Manuel Fangio. The victories inspire sports cars for the street. So in Italy, in the 50s and 60s, Alfa Romeo was the car for the affluent sports. Enthusiast. Yet no matter how sporty Alpha gets, they can't seem to stay in the black where it counts. The cars, the racing victories, they're really romantic, they're really great stories, but the business side has never worked out well in their favor. By the early 80s, Alfa Romeo looks destined to fail. The company was once again bankrupt, unfortunately. In 1986, the Italian government sells the brand to Fiat for over 5 billion euros. Sadly, success doesn't follow. And then they were launching beautiful cars, but cars which, to a certain extent, neglected the DNA of the brand, which were coming from a totally different angle towards cars. In the late 2000s, the brand is once again fighting the odds to stay alive. Yet amazingly, it continues to engender heartfelt passion in drivers across the globe. Alpha should have probably been dead 75 times. That's why we root for it. To get the attention of car fans, and more importantly, customers, the brand needs a new vehicle. Something bold enough to bring back the magic and brave enough to inspire the next generation. Alfa Romeo needs to make a splash. It needs to catch people's attention. And doing that with a minivan, no. Doing that with a sedan, no. You have to do that with a sports car or supercar. The result is the 4C, a machine that owes its existence to two old friends and a 20-year-old idea. Hal Vester is the CEO of both Maserati and Alfa Romeo. I grew up in the western part of Germany close to Bonn. Uh, my father was an architect, and I should have become an architect too, and I tried, but at the end, I decided to go for my passion and dedicate totally to engineering. Vesta's love for engineering eventually lands him the plum position as director of development at Ferrari, where he helps create the Enzo. It is perhaps the most notable hypercar of its day. This is a German, a very rational man, who's charged with taking this brand that exists for irrational reasons and putting it back on the map. It's no small feat to bring one of the oldest Italian marks back. So, Vesta turns to longtime collaborator Lorenzo Ramagotti. Lorenzo is an old friend. Back in 1998, 1999, he was the chief designer at Pininfarina, a famous design house. Ramacotti is one of the most influential automotive designers in the world. His work ushers in the hypercar era, 
Yet the faster the machines go, the more he longs to create something else. When you have 1,000 horsepower, how can you handle them? If you are not a professional driver, it's almost impossible. Ramacotti's recurring dream is a back-to-basics, lightweight sports car based on supercar tech with a sedan-like 50,000 euro price tag. The idea was to build a car that was still affordable while being uh, very, very extreme. To realize their affordable fantasy, the pair identify four key targets for the new machine. A 40-60 weight distribution, an advanced powertrain, a distinctive Italian design, and perhaps most challenging, a dry weight of less than 900 kilograms. Usually, projects like this in big companies are born like submarines. Keeping the bold idea below the radar and out of sight from company accountants falls on the shoulders of lead designer Alessandro Macalini. Many times when you make a production car, the box is defined. For the foresee, the briefing was uh, different, very different. For weeks, the stealthy group labors deep inside of the Fiat Design Center in Turin, Italy. It's an important place because here the dream can be a real car if we are able to transform a simple dream into something more than that. The team decides to push the affordable edge of the technological envelope and use a carbon fiber tub for the new machine. When we start from zero, uh, the paper was white. We had a, a style meeting with the CEO and we showed him this model that, and we said, well, let's do a concept car for the Geneva show. It's a gamble that pays off when they meet with Sergio Macchioni, the big boss of the entire Fiat empire. When the 4C is unveiled at the Geneva Auto Show, it wows both car fans and critics. Some are the very factory workers who will ultimately build the machine. After we show the car in Geneva, uh, the comments uh, were so positive that we immediately decided to take the car to production. Just one small problem. Alpha has no idea if they can actually build the car. 